Hi everyone. As you can see, I'm sitting in my wife's spot today uh, for today's devotional. Th and thank you for tuning in to join us on this wonderful 2nd of November, 2021. This is our third devotional. And um, I don't know who among you who's tuning in who have really been blessed so far by the last two devotionals uh, that we've had to share on this channel. I just pray and hope that this third one will really touch and speak to you in a very special way tonight. So wherever you are and whatever you're doing, um, I pray that this word really does uh, reach you, bless you, and just comfort you. Um, so kindly join me as we read the passage of the day. I'll be reading from the book of Isaiah, uh, from cha um, the book of chapter uh, book of Isaiah, chapter sixty-one. Sorry about that. Chapter 61 from verses 1 to 3. Kindly join me in reading it. You can grab your Bible. I have the Amplified with me. Uh, and join in. And it reads, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed and commissioned me to bring good news to the humble and afflicted. He has sent me to bind up the wounds of the brokenhearted, to proclaim release to the captives, and freedom to the prisoners, to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord, and the day of vengeance and retribution of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to grant to those who mourn in Zion the following, to give them a turban instead of dust, the oil of joy instead of mourning, the garment of praise instead of a disheartened spirit, so they will be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. Let's take a moment and bow our heads, shall we? Dear God, Thank you for your word today. We pray that it will speak to us in a very new and special way. It will freshen our hearts and our minds. Give us joy and give us, grant us relief from the burdens of life, from the afflictions that we face on a day-to-day -day basis, as well as the worries and concerns that we have in our hearts. And may you continue just to show us that you are truly with us even in these moments of stillness. So thank you, Lord, for this time that you've given unto us to have just with you in your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, one of the things that stands out um, about this particular reading today is that it's the very first text Jesus preached from uh, when you go to the Gospels. And it's particularly fascinating when you read it, right? Because it talks about the freedom it talks about the good news that's brought to the humble and the afflicted. I don't know how many of you have trusted in God and have kept yourselves in a place of waiting. Those of you who feel the pain and burden of life and have found that you don't really quite see anything happen in your lives just yet. Um, and... The passage goes on to read, saying, um, He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. Think about it. This was Jesus' first sermon. This was Jesus' first sermon. And he says, not only is he here to bind the brokenhearted, but he's here to proclaim release to the captives, freedom to the prisoners. And as the chapter would say, to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord. And the chapter would go on to say, as a section that uh, in this part the Gospels do not include, that the day of vengeance and retribution of our God is also being declared in this. But it is not to attack you, neither to destroy you. It is to comfort all who mourn. So I do not know what it is you're going through right now or how you've been feeling or how the week has started. I don't know whether it's a family friend or a colleague or uh, someone who's really putting you down right now uh, or an issue that's really touched your heart. Maybe it has to do with something in the, that you're seeing in the world. Maybe it has to do with something that you're experiencing at church or in any particular space. But I want you to think on this with me. I love to think on this passage using... Um, an example from pop culture, right? So Mad TV had this skit done 
so many years ago um, about a woman grieving for her husband who had passed. And some of you watching might relate with this example. And as she's grieving, she says some very interesting things in the middle of the church. You can imagine this is during the wake uh, of her uh, deceased husband. And she says, Jesus, Jesus, take me instead <laughs> of my husband. And she says, it so, uh, she says it a couple of times. And finally, Jesus shows up, right? And the first reaction from the minister is, who are you? When, while looking at Jesus. And Jesus is like, I'm Jesus. And the priest is like, I don't get it. I don't know how you are Jesus. He doesn't believe that this is Jesus, right? So Jesus walks up to the priest and says, hey, I have a few things to tell you. And then whispers in his ear. And then while whispering in his ear, reveals some secrets about him that finally makes the priest actually exclaim and just say, oh my goodness, yes, you are Jesus. Now, it is a very surprising thing to think about it. And it's not the first time that idea has been hinted that when the Lord is present in our lives, is it easy for us to recognize him? It doesn't necessarily have to be in a moment of pain. It doesn't have to be in a moment of affliction. It doesn't have to be in a moment of of just pure stillness or any other thing that could, you know, any other situation we could find ourselves in in life. It could just be that Jesus is there. Not because we did anything, not because he is there. Now, I want you to think about this with me for this devotional. How good are we at picking out what the Lord has in store for us? Even in those moments of pain. Even in those moments of waiting. What is it that we can find about Jesus? What is it that we can get to know about the Lord in those moments of quiet that we would not have learned otherwise are we able to recognize him with ease or do we struggle to hear him to see him could it be that we elevate our problems and our issues above him and they somehow become walls that prevent our eyes from truly seeing him for while we think we are alone are we really and is he too far that he does not hear your prayers, does not hear your cries? This text reminds me that what Jesus said as he preached this sermon, this sermon is what he still speaks to us today. He is still here to help, to heal, to guide, to strengthen to inspire, to speak with us in those moments when we are looking for him. For he's never too far away. And as, it rest, and as the New Testament will remind us, he is always, always going to be with us. So I pray as we leave uh, this channel, as you go about the rest of your day or night, that you will be inspired to think on these things and to look for him ever more diligently in your day-to-day -day walk. You're blessed. Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your week. Bye-bye.